and welcome to Fayette County Public Library Storytime. Our first story today is Skinny Brown Dog. He's cute. One ear up and one ear down. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Yeah. Yep. And he is, look how skinny he is. That's it's skinny. It was skinny. Very skinny. Yes. Every day, long before the sun came up, Benny the Baker walked two doors down to his bakery on Harmony Street. And you see, here's that skinny brown dog. How is there a bear? Peeking around from behind the trash can. How is there a bear walking? He mixed the dough and made bread, cakes, cookies, muffins, and brownies. Miss Patterson especially liked Benny's raspberry muffins and stopped by each afternoon at 2 o'clock to buy one. Whenever a cookie broke, Benny placed the pieces into a box. Once a week, he hung a sign in his window. It said, Free Broken Cookie Day. After school, children hurried to the bakery to see if the sign was posted. If it was, they stopped in for a treat. If not, they waved at Benny and headed home. Benny looked forward to Free Broken Cookie Day as much as the children. He liked to see the children. Bear. Where's the skinny dog at? There he is. There he is. Don't you like the way he lifts his hat off his head? <laughs> One afternoon, a skinny brown dog wandered into Benny's bakery. Sorry, but dogs aren't allowed in my bakery, Benny said as he led the dog outside with a warm piece of pumpernickel bread. He does look thirsty, Benny thought, so he gave the dog a bowl of fresh water. Look how he's drinking it. <laughs> he's drinking it like a cup. <laughs> <laughs> Looks half human, doesn't he, sitting there with that, drinking it. That night when Benny closed the bakery, he found the skinny brown dog still sitting outside his door. The dog stood and wagged his tail when he saw Benny. He started to follow Benny home, so Benny stopped walking. Hate to break the news to you, fella, but you're not my dog. Somehow the dog seemed to understand, and his tail pointed down to the ground as he watched Benny walk away. Do you know when a dog is sad, his tail kind of hangs down? Yep. If he's happy, it's up and wagging. But when he's sad, it's down. Benny ate dinner, then sat in his chair and read the newspaper. He looked down at the little rug in front of his fireplace. It was big enough for a dog. Look, he's kind of imagining he's there. Why? He doesn't even like that dog. Yeah. No. No, thought Benny. I don't need a dog. Yes, you do. The next morning, the skinny brown dog was sleeping outside the bakery. He awoke when he heard Benny unlock the door. The dog stood and wagged his tail, then started to walk inside. Sorry, but a bakery isn't any place for a dog, Benny said again. Mm, Benny gave him dog? a thick slice of wheat bread with butter and some water. It was then that he noticed the small white spot on the dog's left ear. You see he has white on the end of his ear. Kind of nice little mark. At two o'clock, Miss Patterson arrived for her raspberry muffin. The dog stood and wagged his tail. Miss Patterson dropped her purse. When the dog picked it up for her, Miss Patterson stroked the dog's head. You have a smart dog, she told Benny, even if he is a little skinny. He's not my dog, Benny said. Yes, she said, I can see that. You think he's cute sitting in that yeah. box? Yeah. I think it's. I think he's going to sleep there. You think he will? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to see. Now, do you do you notice this this Miss um, Patterson, this elephant? Yeah. Is, she's winking. That kind of goes with. Yes, I can see that. <laughs> when he said it wasn't his dog, she said, "Yes, I can see that." When the dog was at the bakery door the next morning, Benny shook his head, then noticed the dog's eyes. They were dark as chocolate chips. 
This time, Benny gave him a bone with a little meat on it. Ooh. Now he didn't give him just bread and water. He's going to give him a bone with meat on it. That pig was on the front. What? The children came by the bakery every day now, even when it wasn't free cook broken cookie day. They played with the skinny brown dog and taught him to walk on his hind legs. Look at that. <laughs> he actually walked on those two. When the children sang songs, the dog aimed his nose toward the sky and tried to sing, too. Benny liked having the children around more often. <laughs> Even though Benny acts like he doesn't want that dog there, it seems to me like he sort of likes it. What's your dog's name? Sam asked. He's not my dog, Benny said, as he slipped the dog a broken gingerbread cookie. I think his name should be Brownie, said Pete. The other children agreed. Yeah. Brownie. They agreed with Brownie that Brownie was a perfect name for a skinny brown dog that ate and slept at Benny's Bakery. When Miss Patterson stopped at the bakery for her raspberry muffin, she patted Brownie's head and told Benny, you have a good dog. He's not my dog, Benny told her every day. And every day, Miss Patterson said, yes, I can see that. <laughs> That evening, Benny turned off the bakery light, locked the door, and went home. He wouldn't look at Brownie as he walked away, but Brownie watched Benny until he disappeared into his house. And there's the other... Now, he's thinking again about that dog sitting there in front of the fireplace. Him likes that dog. He's going to say, that's not my dog. Benny cooked dinner and read the paper and tried not to notice the empty spot on the rug. Why try not to notice? The next day, when it was too early for the children, and even for Miss Patterson, Benny climbed a ladder to the very top and reached for a new bag of sugar. On the way down, oops, his foot missed a rung of the ladder, and he fell to the floor with a big crash. Uh -oh. Brownie came to the door right away, but he wouldn't step inside because he knew Benny didn't allow him in the bakery. Help, Benny yelled. Help me, Brownie. He called him Brownie. <laughs> Brownie ran up and down the street barking. People walked by, but no one stopped except Miss Patterson, who was on her way to buy her raspberry muffin. What's wrong, Brownie? she asked. Brownie tugged at her dress, pulling her toward the bakery. Let's see how he brought her right up to the bakery. When she stepped inside, Miss Patterson saw what was wrong. She rushed over to Benny and called the ambulance. Soon the paramedics arrived. It looks like you've broke your leg, said one. It's a bad break, said the other. You'll probably have to stay at the hospital a few days. As they carried him to the ambulance, Benny asked Miss Patterson, Who will take care of Brownie? Don't worry, Miss Patterson said. I'll watch him. Benny had to stay in the hospital for a week. The first day, Miss Patterson and the children came to visit after school. Benny was happy to see them, but he asked, How is Brownie? Where is Brownie? He's not in the picture. So the next day, the children called Benny's name from outside his hospital window. Benny smiled when he saw Brownie. Brownie wagged his tail when he saw Benny. Can't they come inside my room? Benny asked the nurse. The children may, she said, but a hospital is no place for a dog. Well, I don't see the harm in letting in one skinny brown dog, mumbled Benny. I'm sorry, said the nurse. Hospital rules. When she saw Brownie twirl on his hind legs, she added, smart dog, though. Benny waved out the window and noticed for the first time that Brownie wasn't that skinny anymore. The children began to sing a song, and Brownie joined in. 
You're a good fella, Brownie, Benny said as the children walked away from the not-so-skinny brown dog that had no home but ate and slept at Benny's bakery. You see how fat he's gotten? All those broken cookies. All week the children returned. Sometimes Miss Patterson came too. I sure miss your raspberry muffins, she told Benny. We miss free broken cookie day, said the children. I miss the bakery, said Benny. Especially Brownie. Mm -hmm. Finally, Saturday arrives. See, he's thinking about Brownie there. Everybody's thinking about something. They are. Every children one of them. Thinking. She's thinking about her muffins. The children are thinking about the broken cookies. Yay. And Benny's thinking, thinking about <clears throat> Brownie. Brownie. So finally, Saturday arrived, and Benny went home. But one of them didn't have a mind you're thinking about. Yeah. Oh, one of them didn't? This time, Benny, or Brownie did too. Brownie got to go home too. You got the... Benny. Yeah, I sort of made a mistake there, didn't I? So there, they've changed the name of the bakery. Look, Benny and Brownie's Bakery. Ha-ha. And look, Brownie has a tray with some little cakes on it. That's it, mm -hmm. And right down here it says, Everyone Welcome. So that means everyone welcome. That means even Brownie is welcome now. I like that story. I got glue on my finger. From all of the two Okay, I think Miss Lisa has a good dog story for us, too. Okay, today we are going to do a little bit something different. As I read the story, we're going to be changing this plain old black and white dog as we read through the story. Right here it says a colorful dog, and that's the name of our story today. So I'm going to give each of you three beautiful colors. Yay. And when I come across that color in the story, we'll That's talk about that color, color and we'll decorate our dog. Okay? So this is our second dog story today, and it's called second. Dog's Colorful Day, a messy story about colors and counting. Okay? Do you see something colorful on the cover? What's colorful? What's on the cover that's colorful? The bone. The bone. A bone's usually that color? No. no. <laughs> Have you ever seen a rainbow bone? I haven't. Mm -mm. All right. So let's see what happens here to this dog. Oh, now right right away we can see he's all colorful. <laughs> let's see if he starts that way on the very first page, he though. All I've right. Seen this, this is dog. <laughs> His name is just dog. dog. Okay. As you can see, Dog is white with one black spot on his left ear. So let's see. Does he have a black spot on his left ear? Yep. Yep, there it is. Got one spot. But his bone's all colorful. He's not, right? <laughs> no. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Maybe it's just a squeaky toy. At breakfast time, dog sits under the table as usual. Splat. A drip of red jam lands on his back. Now dog has two spots. Alright, so what's the red? How come he has red? Hey, okay, go ahead and come put it up here. What made him red though, girls? Jam. Jam. What kind of jam do you suppose that is? Uh, what kind of jam would it be? Uh, strawberry. Strawberry jam? Or what else could it be? Raspberry. Raspberry. Okay. Raspberry. So there comes a little drip drop and it landed right there. And now look at our dog. <gasps> He's got his red spot. Mm. Let's see what happens next. After breakfast, dog ran outside. He slips past the man painting the front door. Splish. His tail dips into the blue paint. No, dog has three spots. Let's make him have three spots. Where are you going to put it? Are you going to put it where it goes? Right on his tail. Okay. So, oh, it doesn't stay. Oh, here. Let's see. Make it stay. 
Okay. There we so, go. So, how come he had a red spot? Red was for the jam. jam. Blue is for the, the pink. pink. Okay, let's see what all this other color is for. Because now he's got three spots. <laughs> Dog runs to the park and he rolls in the grass. Squash. The grass makes a green stain on his white coat. Now Dog has four spots. All right, where's our green? Let's add some green grass stain. Way up there. Oh, this one is the paint the paint stain doesn't want to stay up. Yeah. Get up there, paint. Okay. The red was for the jam. jam. Blue was the, the paint. paint. Green was the grass. The grass stain. Yes, yeah. if we're not careful, we get grass on us, don't we? If we're walking and rolling in the grass. Now, dog follows a little boy eating chocolate. Squish. The boy gives dog a chocolatey pat, but no chocolate. Dogs shouldn't have chocolate, should they? No. Now dog has five, five spots. All right, let's put our chocolate spot on him. Where's Where? the chocolate gonna go? Here, it's over here by his leg. Where's that chocolate yeah. gonna go? Sure. <laughs> I like chocolate, so make it a big spot. Yeah. All right, so we have two Don't. things that were food. Maybe not press so hard. We have jam and grass and paint and chocolate, don't we? No, I have one more. What else could happen to this dog today? I don't. A bee buzzes to see what's going on. Swish. The bee drops yellow pollen as it flies by. Now dog has six spots. All right, where's our yellow going to go? Pollen comes from flowers. So when that bee came by, he's going to drop that pollen right on him. Okay, let's see if we remember. Well, these little don't want to stay we real well we today, do they? We didn't trouble, did we? The red is the stickiest. The yeah. red is the jam. Yeah. The green yeah. is the grass. Blue, the blue is the hay. Yellow is pollen. pollen. And is brown chocolate. chocolate. Yeah. All right, let's see what happens it. next to dog. Dog trots on through the park. Splosh! A drop of pink ice cream lands on his ear. Now he has seven spots. Good, now it stayed. All right, so now we've got some pink ice cream. Time to go home. Dog runs up the street. Splash! A bouncing ball splatters the dog with gray mud. Uh, now the dog has eight, eight spots. spots. All right, let's put the gray up there. Where did I have my book? It's way back here by his tail. Maybe his butt, but yeah, there we go. He'd be in there. Okay, what was the pink? Ice cream. Ice cream. The red. Jam. Green. Grass. Blue. Paint. Yellow. Pollen. Chocolate. Chocolate. And mud. Mud. <laughs> mud puddle. Yeah. Ooh. So let's see what happens. We still got a couple more spots. In front of the gate, dog steps on a <laughs> carton of orange juice. A splurt. On his leg. A patch of orange appears on his leg. Look at him. He splurted the little oh. carton all on his leg. <laughs> he, now he has. Nine, Nine spots. spots. All right, I mean, let's, let's, let's put our zero. orange up there. It was on his leg, so you had a couple spots to choose from. I want to stick mine right there. Right. Oh, right up there? Yeah. Oh, very good. The pollen just fell off. That's, I'll put the oh. pollen back up there. I'll put the pollen back uh, up there. I don't there. know if it's going to stay. Very gentle touch. Very good. The dog races back inside the house, and he knocks right into Vicky. Silly dog. Vicky's purple marker <laughs> leaves a smudge on dog's head. Now dog has Five. ten spots. All right, put the purple. I guess it's going to have to go on his legs. Yeah, right here. That's okay. Yep. Uh, and we don't, we don't have any gentle. more. Yep, there we go. There you go. We don't have any more. Oh. Vicky looks down at dog and she counts his colorful spots. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. 
Vicky looks more closely. Dog has a red spot because of jam, a blue blob of paint, green stain because of grass, brown smear of chocolate, yellow patch of pollen, pink drop of ice cream, gray splatter of mud, orange splash of Orange juice. Orange juice. A purple smudge of marker. marker. Yep. And of course, the black spot on his left ear. Now, you guys can can you predict what might happen next? If this dog has all these spots on him, what might Vicky want to do to him? Wash him off. Wash him? Do dogs like to take a bath? Yeah. No. Maybe some do. Not mine. Not mine either. So cats don't like taking baths. <laughs> cats don't like baths at all. All right. Uh -uh. Let's see if you guys predicted correctly. Ready? <gasps> you need a bath, uh -huh. dog. Oh, him likes water. <laughs> he does. He's in a little bathtub, isn't he? So are all the spots gone? Yeah. yeah. Every spot except his Black. Black one, which belongs to him. Yep. Yeah, I can't wash that one on. When dog climbs into bed, he has just one black spot on his left ear. All clean, ready for bed. Mm -hmm. Good night, dog. What a colorful day he had. Yeah, look at his dream. He's dreaming of, what was the red? Jam. Yellow. Pollen. Blue. Paint, pink, ice cream, ice cream green, uh -huh. grass, and then the orange was the, the orange. Good job. You have a great memory. Ooh. All right. We're going to move on to a story. We had a skinny brown dog. We had a skinny colorful dog. dog. And now we have a scrawny cat. <laughs> Ronnie um, Cat. Maybe something will wax up in your mouth. Cat. Him likes something to move. Like him trying to eat it. Really? All right, let's have some go. good listeners. A scrawny cat crept down the street. He was lonely. He was little. He was lost. <gasps> he had belonged to someone once, and she had belonged to him. Someone who picked him up and scratched his ears and let him lick her chin. Someone who knew his name. Now everyone called him, Get out of here! But the scrawny cat knew his name was not, Get out of here. The wind hurried the scrawny cat along. <clears throat> he hunkered in a doorway where good smells drifted out. Maybe someone would let him inside and give him something warm to eat. <clears throat> Excuse me. But when the door opened, a man yelled, Get out of here! Poor cat. Look, he's got his broom out there just shooing away. So the scrawny cat bolted down the street straight into a big dog. Growled the dog. The skittery, scrawny cat raced away all the way to the dock. Grrr, growled the big dog right behind her. What else could the scared little scrawny cat do? He leaped into a dinghy just as kaboom! Rain plummeted down. The big dog ran away. I think that big dog was a little afraid of the kaboom. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> the scrawny cat huddled under the dinghy seat. Now, you know that a boat, some boats, they call them dinghies. Mm -hmm. Up and down, up and down, the dinghy rocked in the waves, just the way someone used to rock the scrawny cat in a chair. <coughs> The tuckered out scrawny cat put his head on his paws and fell asleep. It's like rocking a baby to sleep, I guess. The wind blew, the waves crashed, the rope tying the dinghy to the dock snapped. Mm. See, they, this is called the dock. Yeah. And they use a rope to tie the boats to the dock 
so they won't float away in the water. Mommy dropped her water because she was walking on the dock and she dropped it in the water. Oh, she did. <laughs> yeah, once it hits the water, it floats away. When the scrawny cat woke up, all he saw was water, water everywhere. Poor, shivery, scrawny cat. He lapped the rainwater in the bottom of the dinghy and wished his stomach didn't chew so on his ribs. Probably growling. At last the sun came up, golden across the waves. Up ahead, just where the boat was headed, the scrawny cat saw a rock and a tree and a house on the sand. He sure is. Pretty far away at that point. A woman came out of the house. She had been a sailor once, but her ship had crashed on the rocks. She had built a little house for herself and settled down to catch fish and gather seaweed and pick berries. But sometimes she missed sailing the open sea and all by herself she got a little lonely. Now she came down to the shore to see what the storm had blown in. And there she sees the dinghy. The scrawny cat hunkered under the dinghy seat. Would the woman throw things at him and call him, Get out of here! The dinghy grated on the sand. The woman reached down. Mm, what do you think she's going to do? Grab the cat. And picked the scrawny cat up. How did you get way out here all by yourself? The woman said. You must be quite the sailor cat. That's kind of a happy picture, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That is not a sailor cat. <laughs> he was scared, wasn't he? Yes. So I call him a sailor cat. No. The woman took the scrawny cat inside her house. She rubbed him dry with a towel and put a bowl of fish stew on the floor. Now, fish stew doesn't sound very good to me, but to a cat, they would like it. The scrawny cat lapped up the stew until his stomach was round and full. Look how fat he is. <laughs> the woman picked him up again. Would she throw him out the door? No. What do you think she'll do? Rock him. Rock him? <laughs> Not at all. She sat in a rocking chair and scratched the scrawny cat's ears. I've been wanting some company, the woman said, and here you come sailing in like a regular skipper. The scrawny cat purred. Skipper, that's what I'll call you, the woman said. I'm Emma. Skipper purred harder and licked Emma under her chin. They look kind of happy there. Oh, look at that. It is a sailor cat. <laughs> if you are lucky enough to go sailing someday far out to sea, you might see them together, Skipper and Emma. Skipper isn't scrawny anymore. He is a real sailor cat now. I think that's a special picture. Look at that. <laughs> but best of all, Skipper belongs to Emma. And Emma belongs to Skipper. That's a sweet story, isn't it? The Skipper won't go away because it's on the Yeah, beach. yeah. Okay, well, that's it for our story time today. I think you want to stand up and tell everybody goodbye? Yeah. Tell them goodbye. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.